Okay, part four of the Dukov D9. Uh, I've previously measured and recorded um, the, uh, the facing readings off to the side here. Um, what we're looking at here is a picture of the mouthpiece held in this orientation. I've explained this on another video. Um, what it shows is that a fairly nice curve. Uh, the dark blue line, which is the average of the left and right measurements, falls real close to uh, my magenta or pink uh, ideal curve through it. It's a little crooked coming off the table. It's a lot crooked where it breaks after the uh, 50 feeler gauge. Again, this is a case where I, I believe if Claude Humber worked on this, uh, he um, didn't have a gauge that was larger than 50, so he freehanded the surface and made a nice curve out of it, but one rail is a little higher than the other. So we're going to try to fix that um, with our facing work. So. Okay. First, I got to see how, how flat the table is. It didn't look too bad when I laid a straight edge on it, but there. I'm sure it could use a little bit. It may have even been a little concave by design. See, it's kind of cleaned up around the outside edges. So I prefer these things flat. Plus, being how I have to open up the tip a little bit to. Um, fix its shape, it's good to flatten the table some so that I have some some room to work with. See, it's almost cleaned up. I can come maybe in another few strokes. And I'm trying to do this flat. I, I, you know, I put pressure right here uh, on the mouthpiece and I sometimes lift up the heel a little bit, especially if, if you have a convex uh, table. That's a technique you have to use so that you can take down the the bump. But this one didn't have that problem. It was pretty flat around the perimeter so just needed to clean it up there. So facing got a little shorter probably up to here. Um, again uh, I'm taking a look at this. Let's just see the evenness of it. It was real even in the middle, let's say right around here. That's fairly even. But then when I got up here, the right rail, I mean the left rail is uh, higher than the right one. As we get all the way up to the tip. So. Uh, you heard me play it, so it didn't bother me with my embouchure, but some guys uh, might play with more pressure than I do, and if they're using a cane reed, um, you know, the, the crookedness along with uh, the high baffle near the tip is a fuel that, uh, a combination that is sometimes gives players squeak problems. So pretty much from 18 on out is an area where I need to take more material off this left rail. Sometimes I use uh, two sheets of paper, one up and one down, but since we're just starting, you can just kind of lean on that rail more. Plus it helps, I have to clean up the tip rail also. Vacuum this off. Do just some spot checks. It's the very tip. I can go a little more. Just a tad more. That's pretty much right on. So we're close. Switch to the fine sandpaper. We're close as, as even. Okay. Now you can see 
after I did that, how it widened where I took that left corner down. The tip rail got fatter there as we, we cut into the material. And that gives me uh, now the option of either thinning the tip rail from the inside or the outside. In this case, we want to go from the outside to try to get that to, uh, you know, more closely resemble the tip of a reed. So, so I look for my file and we start shaping. Pretty much the low spot is right here, and in fact that's a very thin tip rail there, so we're going to have to open up, open up the tip just a tad more to get some thickness in that area. Almost there. A little bit more from there. A little bit more on the side. Okay. And uh, got my sandpaper sticks. And we can come back to that later if we need to, but you shouldn't need to unless we, you know, gain thickness on the inside where we don't want it. And uh, I probably should not have. Uh, uh, you know, did the steel wool and the fine finishing there because we may still have to shape this tip rail from the inside, so. Okay. Now let me check the facing back where it broke from the table. Sometimes after you flatten the table, uh, you know, what was uneven before is now even because the table doesn't flatten exactly uniform. So we're we're uh, 46 there and that's the case here. I mean this used to be 51 um, so you know and it was crooked in the other direction so it's fairly even but it's a little on the short side so to kind of get us back to where we were I'm going to do a very light pass in that area then a few passes over the full facing and that's roughing it in and then I'm gonna have to take a full set of measurements and you can see that tip rail is kinda it's thick everywhere except that one spot so I you know I'll wait till the end of the job and then I'll I'll thin it where needed from the inside I also have a little bit more material in the bottom here than over there, so, uh, but that doesn't affect the sound much. I'll fix that also, but... Alright, so I'll take a set of readings. Okay. It's about forty eight and forty seven point eight. I'll eventually be making, making that go closer to 50 on this piece. 48 is not a bad length, it's just that being how this had a fairly open tip at 118 when we started, 50, 51, 52 is a better one. 
39.2 and 39. 33.9, even on both sides. So we, we got the first three readings to take care of. Then 28.6. Twenty-three point nine, twenty-three point eight, eighteen, nineteen, even, eighteen point eight. Even. And two point six to two point five. A little uneven. No problem to take care of that. Lastly, tip opening. I said it was one eighteen, I guess measured one sixteen before. Now I'm getting A 114. And my tip rail width in the center where I measured it, contacted it with my depth gauge. It's about 034, which is a little too thick, so. If we thin that from the inside, that 114 will go to probably up to 115, close to back where we were. So, what the uh, plot looks like now, um, it dropped down in this area. Uh, that was from flattening the table. And we worked the tip more than we did the rest of the facing. So it's pretty much back to the original spec here. We just need to kind of... Uh, work on the facing curve for the first uh, eight or so readings to get that up. So um, I'll do that and then uh, we'll start another uh, part after this.